Excuse me, no, no. All right, guys. Okay, we have somehow survived the big blow down here at Doomsday Trailer in Donellan, Florida. On a, what? Where are we? Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. So, uh,. I think it is Richard Outhouse Nixon's birthday, so we're going to raise a glass and uh, toast the memory of Richard Outhouse Nixon, who, uh, by the way, his his environmental record, if, if Joe Biden had one-tenth the environmental legacy of Richard Outhouse Nixon, uh, we might actually be able to save this planet. So anyway, I, 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 I just heard, I was just got off the phone with my good buddy, Elliot Jacobson. And I, so Elliot was, you know, asking me, me about the tornadoes down here in Florida. And I'm going, huh, about tornadoes in Florida. And I told him that, uh, I was so busy shopping for curtains on Amazon.com, so I'm sitting in a single wide trailer in in Florida in January, and, and the, the the trailer's shaking. I, I mean, I, I hear shit blowing by and slamming into the side of the trailer. The roof of my gator blew off. Uh, <laughs> And I, I did hear that we were under some sort of tornado watch, but I was so busy shopping for curtains on Amazon.com uh, that I didn't pay it much attention. And so apparently Elliot was telling me, I have to get my news from someone in Santa Barbara, California. So I guess there was a tornado around here. Uh, not far from here, so uh, you know they. What what's the old joke? Why is a tornado in the deep south like a redneck divorce? Why is a tornado in the deep south like a redneck divorce? Somebody somewhere is going to lose the trailer. So, uh, but somehow the Doomsday trailer survived another Doomsday event while I was shopping for curtains on Amazon, <coughs> which is actually germane to this discussion. Uh, so the reason I was, uh, I was talking to Elliot is uh, I'm going to be bringing on uh, on Friday, I'm going to be bringing on to the show my good buddy Vegematic, the, the artist formerly known as Vegematic, who has turned over a new, loo new leaf. He's been down in the Doomosphere even longer than I have. Is I have to start calling him Chris now. He's no longer named Veg. Uh, and... I guess that Chris is just tired of telling people how fucked we are and has turned over a new leaf and is figuring, he's about my age, Chris and I are about the same age, and, and he is simply turning his attention on how to, uh, you know, basically j just how to live out the rest of his life uh, knowing how fucked we are. So anyway, I'm really looking forward to that conversation because I, I'm, I'm hearing more and more doomers kind of reaching the point that I and Chris are, are, are getting to about just how many ways can you say that we're so fucked. So I, I turn on medium.com today and I thought that I was getting ready to read uh, an essay about this very subject from I, this this fellow. I'm assuming B. This is this uh, <clears throat> mysterious B 
uh, one of my favorite writers on medium.com, <clears throat> B is not a clueless moron, and B's <clears throat> essay today, how about this for doomer porn clickbait, death cults, doomers, and an end of a civilization. There you go, and so obviously I could not pass that up. So B starts out with this long quote, which I won't get into, uh, by the poet Shelley. Uh, it goes in this long quote by Shelley as an intro to uh, his essay. So I'm just going to read the opening of the essay. I'll put the link on here, and I do encourage you to read it if you are unaware how fucked we are. B is always happy to tell you how fucked you are. If you are unaware of how fucked you are, B can explain it to you every bit as well as I can. So we're going to come in after this long quote from Shelley talking about how fucked we are. <clears throat> Our, in, our industrial civilization is in full denial of its mortality. We teach, well, we, we, we teach the doomer porn poetry of Shelley to our children, yet somehow we manage to remain fully oblivious to the temporal nature of our culture. Why do I tell such depressing stories? Well, while I am fully aware that the decline of our modern age is inevitable, I do believe that we doomers and collapsniks have an important role to play. Depression, doom, and despair are important emotions, but they are not the end state. These feelings must be contended with and then passed by in the process of grief felt over the loss of this way of life, you know, meaning shopping for curtains on Amazon.com while your trailer is blowing away in a January tornado in Florida. That's what he's talking about. The loss of this way of life and the world we came to know as a child. I do believe that learning to mourn your losses then move on is an important step in becoming a grown adult. And while some prefer the mushroom treatment, i.e. to be kept in the dark and fed bullshit, I suspect that there are quite a few who would like to understand what is really going on and why. It's like becoming aware that you are neither invulnerable nor going to live forever. Some never learn this lesson and fail to grow up or end up in the mortuary much sooner than would be otherwise expected. Others, and I believe this is the vast majority, except the first part, you know, the part about uh, being uh, aware that you're not invulnerable. They accept the first part, but somehow struggle to fully embrace the second. You know that part about you're not going to live forever? Unfortunately, they learn this at the very end of their lives when they finally get their terminal diagnosis. It is only then when they really start to process their grief felt over the loss of all their future prospects, they realize that they could have lived a different life. 
our civilization, especially in the West, is not unlike these people. It has received countless warnings and bad diagnoses from climate change to resource depletion, yet it still believes that it can dodge the reaper. If you, dear reader, still wave your hands thinking how somehow, somewhere, will surely come up with something and how all this doom and gloom is just baloney, well, then you are still in the denial camp. I don't blame you for that. This culture does everything it can to make you believe that it is here to stay for many millennia to come, just like the Romans and Mayans thought they would. And so that is the opening uh, chapter to this long, excellent essay, and which I, I'll put the link on, and I will encourage you to read this. But then, uh, B goes off and, and into all the ways that we're so fucked. I, I, uh, I was led to believe in the beginning of the article what does... It, 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 guys, I'm not knocking the article. I'm still suggesting you, you read it. Uh, where, where does he... Uh, I, I just read it any, anyway about moving on. Uh, anyway, you just heard me, but I'll, and I've already lost it, it here in the thing. Uh, 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 you, you know, about once you understand how completely fucked we are, and be as a good a person as any to explain this to you in, in straight ahead English, uh, you know, what do you do with this information? What, once you get it, what the hell do you do with it? This is uh, what I am trying to figure out in my own life, what the artist formerly known as Vegematic, now known as Chris, it, you know, it, it, he's trying to figure this out in his own life. And, and I've heard more and more squeaks and peeps from, uh, from doomers, and, and, you know, and they, they tend to be my age. You know, we're, we're all the, the same age in, in, in our mid-60s, me and Elliot and, and uh, Chris and Sandy and Michael Campy. You know, we're roughly all in our mid-60s. And uh, it, it, it's just the same old question. Uh, I used to always answer the question, and I think I even did on Soft White Underbelly, about, you know, my sister is always pointing, is always asking me this question. She, she says, okay, uh, Sam, she goes, hi, this is my sister. I agree with you. We're, we're totally, completely fucked. So, so why do you spend your entire life, uh, you know, saying, uh, you know, two plus two equals four? Yeah, we're fucked. Move on with your life. Uh, and, and, and how can you move on with your life uh, and go shopping for curtains on Amazon.com while a goddamn tornado is blowing right outside your window. Uh, it, but, but I'm getting better at it. I'm getting better at it. I, I used to answer that question uh, when people would, would, would ask me this. I, I just think that, that it's an interesting subject. You know, the single biggest issue to face humanity bar none ever in our history as a species what is going on right outside the window of this trailer while I'm shopping for curtains on Amazon.com 
is the single biggest story in, in human history. I just think it's an interesting story uh, to be talking about. Uh, but you, you, you know guys, more and more uh, when, when people ask me this question, when my sister or uh, market soft white underbelly or whoever it is, well if you know, if you know that we're fucked and, and you believe this, why do you spend your entire life just repeating the mantra, we are so fucked, we are so fucked, we are so fucked, uh, and, and, and I have less and less of an answer for it. It's still the biggest story in the history of humanity. It, it, in no way, shape, or form is it, is it not the biggest story in, in the history of humanity, but I, I, I get it. Okay, and, and so uh, the ar artist formerly known as Vegematic, if you're listening to this, Chris, this is going to be what the, the focus of our conversation uh, is going to be. So this is the central question that, I, that we're going to be talking about uh, is how to live out the rest of your life with the knowledge that we are completely fucked. Uh, so anyway, and so then, so B launches off into that and completely forgets, to, it goes on and on and on. I read every word of this article, excellent article, excellent article. He, he's mainly talking just about the resource depletion uh, component of collapse. Uh, divided into several chapters, you, you know, this, this is just one facet. Of uh, uh, of why we're why we're doomed, that he talks about. Uh, he never comes back to talking about what uh, to do about it. So let's just go down. I'm going to read the last three paragraphs of this excellent essay, and you can finish it out. Even though our situation looks special thanks to our massive overuse of technology, our civilization's decline will share many of its traits with its predecessors. Knowing how deeply unaware both the general public and the ruling classes are, I bet once things start slipping, there will be little, if any, chance of anyone stopping the landslide before the whole shebang hits the bottom of the valley. The reasons, as always, are panic and compounding mistakes. This meaning panic and compounding mistakes. This is how all civilizations end. In denial followed by panic. Uh, and we're not talking uh, toilet paper in the store. Knowing that any civilization on the planet was a time-limited offer, ours included, makes acceptance much easier, though. I feel no resentment, neither towards the political class nor the industrialist. Sure, our civilization could have been managed much better, at least in theory, but this is what we got. While keeping this in mind might be a heavy burden, it also saves one from falling for demagogues, tyrants, and death cultists insisting 
how we must all fight and die in the cleansing flames of a holy war. No, the end of civilization, of a civilization, is not God's punishment, but a fact of life. Due to a number of factors simultaneously at play, resource depletion is just one of them. There is no one to blame, and no one can bring back the good old days either. Instead, we need to look forward, no matter how dark or light the future might seem, and focus on managing a graceful landing for this little unsustainable civilization landing for this unsustainable little civilization of ours. A soft landing. The, uh, the most we can aim for at this point is a soft landing when we go over the Seneca Cliff. But uh, B doesn't offer up a whole lot of advice on how to prepare for a soft landing. Um, maybe he'll come back, but uh, I did enjoy the article right next to uh, to bees from uh, someone named Clem Sampson, scientist. After you die, there will be nothing, and this nothingness will last forever. I am a little unclear what the essay was about. I think he posted it under humor, uh, but I, all I can say is I hope the man is right. Uh, if I cling to one shred of hopium, it's that my mama was correct, and she usually was, uh, that when we die, we're gone. It is lights out. Uh, it is goodbye. Thank you for the party. Uh, goodbye, lights out, and we are done with it forever. There is no such thing as an afterlife or a before life or anything else. And I just hope to hell my mama is right. Uh, why anybody, why anybody uh, would, would want to continue this nightmare as uh, comical, as unintentionally hilarious as this thing called life is, uh, why anybody would, uh, would, would, would want to continue on uh, with this bullshit uh, for one more minute. And, 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 and the, the very thought, the very thought of reincarnation being reincarnated back onto this planet in, in the 21st century <clears throat> strikes terror into me more, more than any other thought. Uh, the, the very idea that reincarnation could be real, and I, and, and I generally don't believe in it. Don't worry, all you left-brainers, but there is some pretty good circumstantial evidence that uh, we, we, we come back to do this shit all over again, and I want no part of it. So I hope to hell that the scientists are right after you die. There will be nothing. But right now I have to wrap up uh, this wishful thinking and get back to uh, Amazon.com. I, I, I think I've found the curtains at least. But, uh, oh God, now i got to go buy some curtain rods. 
get out there and uh, enjoy shopping for uh, curtains for the window of your single wide trailer before the next tornado hits. Bye guys.